this topic is about the fetal placental circulation and uh, you know inside the umbilical cord in the beginning you are having two umbilical arteries and two umbilical veins but later the right regresses and the left is left means means the right umbilical vein will regress and the left umbilical vein will be left so in the beginning the umbilical cord has two umbilical arteries two umbilical veins yes but later things are changing see what happens inside the umbilical cord you are having two umbilical arteries the blue color and one red color so you are telling that there is right and left umbilical arteries the blue color why because they have deoxygenated blood and then you are telling that is this the left umbilical vein left umbilical vein which is red color because it is having oxygenated blood yes actually it is bringing the oxygenated blood from the mother mother is sending the oxygenated blood in the left umbilical vein towards the developing brain of the baby towards the developing brain of the baby but this blood is going towards the liver shall i give it to liver no you have to bypass the liver you cannot give this oxygen to liver liver is immature in the baby so if liver is immature in the baby you don't want much oxygen to be given here no you have to bypass the liver how do you bypass the liver to bypass the liver i have a channel it is called as ductus venosus so ductus venosus can take the high concentration oxygen blood by passing the liver through the ductus venosus and uh, pushing it directly into inferior vena cava and the heart so this blood will now go into inferior vena cava and the heart yes when the blood has come to the heart it will send it towards the lungs no why because lungs are immature and they don't require that much of oxygenated blood so where the blood should go this blood which has entered the heart has to bypass the lung how do you bypass the lung in fetal circulation see the blood which has entered the right atrium will bypass the lung by pushing blood directly into the left atrium if you remember we have discussed this so in fetal circulation right atrium blood should go to left atrium yes passing from an ovale yes passing from an ovale it is required in fetal circulation and what if some blood has already entered the right ventricle if some blood has already entered the right ventricle then that blood would have uh, gone to the lung no it is not going because maybe some blood has entered from the right atrium to right ventricle but the right ventricle send it towards the ascending aorta the pulmonary trunk so right ventricle is sending it towards the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary trunk is not carrying it towards the lung it is using a bypass channel which is called ductus arteriosus so pulmonary trunk is sending this blood into the ductus arteriosus and into the aorta yes because most of this blood with high oxygen should enter the carotid artery and brain mother was sending this oxygen towards the developing brain so most of this oxygenated blood should enter the aorta and the carotid artery and brain yes that was the function okay so who is collecting the deoxygenated blood then deoxygenated blood in the fetus is uh, collected by the aorta into into the iliac artery so deoxygenated blood which is collected by the aorta into the iliac artery then where is the iliac artery pushing this uh, blood into the right and left uh, umbilical arteries if you say this blood is going into right and left umbilical arteries the blue color yes because they are having the ocean blood they will give it to the mother and ask the mother mother could you please uh, make it red color and mother will say okay don't worry i'll do it and then the red blood will come back again in the left umbilical vein this is the job of mother fetal circulation so what will happen when the baby is outside the mother you mean to say baby is delivered now yes then the left umbilical vein will be obliterated and and it is going to form what is called as the ligamentum teres and what is ligamentum teres it is the adult remnant of the left umbilical vein similarly that uh, ductus venosus would be closed after birth and will become ligamentum venosum similarly you'll find that this uh, foramen ovale will close and become fossa ovalis after birth and what will happen to ductus arteriosus ductus arteriosus has two kind of closure one is called as physiological closure which is immediate vasospasm after birth and then there's a anatomical closure which is due to intima 
tunica intima proliferation and fibrosis so you are telling that ductus arterius has two kind of uh, closure yes one is physiological closure which is uh, immediately after birth and it is due to vasospasm so a question is asking vasospasm in the ductus arteriosus is happening when different babies different time means there are some babies who will have physiological closure in one day and others two day and three days and four day so what is the maximum time allowed four days and what if it is not having vessel spasm of four days then it is going beyond four days which is 96 hour also four days means 96 hour if it goes beyond 96 hours then you have to plan some medical intervention what is medical intervention that could be some prostaglandin derivatives so some prostaglandin derivatives you have to give because uh, already past 96 hour 4 day yes you have to wait till 4 days and then if it is not so having a vasospasm for physiological closure then you have to proceed with medical treatment and uh, how much time does it take for an atypical closure which is tunica intima proliferation and fibrosis different books give different answer if you read uh, Gray's anatomy it is not matching with the Moore embryology is not matching with the OP pediatrics is not matching with the Nelson pediatrics is not matching with the certain radiology everybody have their own answers what is the question question is when is the anatomical closure happening so some books say one month some say two months some say three months but remember it should happen within 12 weeks if it is beyond 12 weeks it is a pathology you mean to say all the babies must uh, have the anatomical closure of Dr. Sartilus by 12 weeks yes beyond 12 weeks it is pathology so what do I do if it is uh, no anatomical closure after 12 weeks then you have to plan the surgical repair so I have to plan surgical repair now yes this you have to remember and then what is the adult remnant of the umbilical arteries umbilical arteries what they do is they will form some ligaments running towards the umbilicus and what are those ligaments running towards the umbilicus then they are called as a medial they are called as the medial ll medial medial umbilical ligament there's a median also this is not n this is l medial so medial umbilical ligament yes going towards the umbilicus yes and carrying the umbilical arteries towards the umbilicus yes okay now what now you have to look at this question tell me the answer where is the mismatch wrong pairing so if you are looking at this question and searching for the mismatch or wrong pairing i think immediately i got my answer remember that umbilical artery was not producing the lateral it was producing medial so it was not lateral it was medial umbilical ligament then who is producing the lateral umbilical ligament that you have to see also understand that there are some structures in the anterior abdominal wall running towards the umbilicus and covered by some peritoneal fold so there are some questions on those peritoneal fold what is this on the anterior abdominal wall there is some structures passing like we just saw yes and they are covered by some peritoneal fold right so there are having some names which we have to see but this is the answer yes that is the answer because it is not lateral it is medial Middle umbilical ligament, yes. Okay, fine. Let us look at those peritoneal fold now. Where? On the anterior abdominal wall. And what about the anterior abdominal wall? You will see that on the anterior abdominal wall, you are having a falciform ligament, which is a double fold of the peritoneum coming from the umbilicus region and going towards the liver. is carrying the left umbilical vein to the liver. So, falciform ligament is a double fold of peritoneum on the anterior abdominal wall. Yes. And carrying left umbilical vein to the liver. Yes. What is the adult remnant of left umbilical vein? Left umbilical vein would have become ligamentum teres in the adult. And who is carrying ligamentum teres in the adult? The same falciform ligament to the liver. So, ligamentum teres is also carried by the falciform ligament towards the liver. Yes. Okay. I think we got a question on umbilical arteries producing some peritoneal fold here. Yes. 
that is umbilical arteries were producing some ligament and they were called as medial umbilical ligament but on the medial umbilical ligament there will be some peritoneal fold they are called medial umbilical fold you mean some medial umbilical fold is some peritoneal fold yes it is peritoneal fold over the remnant of the umbilical arteries okay then what about the lateral umbilical fold lateral umbilical fold is produced by some blood vessels running towards the rectus sheath enter the rectus sheath so we're telling that there are some blood vessels which are forming lateral umbilical fold some peritoneal fold covering them yes and uh, where are these vessels running they want to enter the rectus sheath if you say so fine they are the one which produce lateral umbilical fold yes the vessels are called inferior epigastric vessels even inferior epigastric artery inferior epigastric vein running towards the rectus sheath to enter the rectus sheath then what is this median umbilical fold it is one in the midline if you say that is a median umbilical fold and one in the midline then uh, i think it is covering the allantois what is allantois allantois is a hindgut diverticulum attaching to the tip of the apex of the urinary bladder so attaching to apex of urinary bladder you have some allantois in the fetus yeah fetus in the fetus there is allantois which is a hindgut diverticulum but in the adult it must be obliterated to become uracus so you mean to say allantois was having some lumen yes and that lumen is obliterated now in the adult to become uracus yes allantois lumen is obliterated to become a uh, fibrous called the uracus and uh, it is uh, running towards the umbilicus producing producing that uh, fold which is called as median n median in the midline it is median umbilical fold now yes we will discuss about this later also when we are in the abdomen region